Hello folks, I'm Mr. Panola, and today we're going to take a look at acceleration in a little more depth. In fact, we're going to dive into the numbers that deal with acceleration. Before we start though, let's make sure that you remember what acceleration is. Acceleration is a measurement of how quickly an object's velocity changes. So if the object is speeding up, it is accelerating. If an object is slowing down, it is accelerating because the velocity is still changing. Or if an object is changing directions, it is also accelerating. So now that we understand again what acceleration is, let's take a look at some mathematical examples of acceleration. Now, let's take an a look at an example that you might be familiar with if you watched my last video. Here is a man that is pushing on a crate, and he's going to cause the crate to accelerate. Now, if you remember from the last video, we measured the acceleration of the crate. And we found that this crate gained 2 meters per second for every second that it was in motion. I'd like you to watch that again. And you can time it out. Every second that goes by, the crate gets roughly 2 meters per second faster. And so it keeps getting faster and faster and faster until the man eventually lets go at the end which we'll watch in just a second. But let's pause the video right here and let's go to our board to take a closer look at what I mean by the fact that the crate is increasing its speed by two meters per second every second. So what did we mean by the fact that the crate is changing its speed or rather increasing its speed by two meters per second every second? Well, that means that the crate speed is going to change by two meters per second for each second that it's in motion. Notice the unit I made here. Meters per second per second. How many meters per second does the speed change by every second? Well, scientists can write this out as two meters per second per second with two seconds on the bottom. That might look really strange. So instead, scientists write it as two meters per second squared. So when you see this unit, meters per second squared, what that, what that means is that the object is changing its speed by this amount of meters per second for every second that it is in motion. So meters per second squared is really the same thing as meters per second per second. By how much has your speed changed by for each second that you're in motion? So we already established that this crate in our video is going to change its speed by two meters per second for every second that it's in motion. That means the acceleration of this crate is going to be two meters per second squared. Now we knew that because we timed it out and we found that every second, the crate increased its speed by two meters per second. But there's an easier way to figure it out. And let me show you what that is. I'm gonna hit play on my video. And while the video is running, I'm going to run a timer. And I'm going to time how long it takes the crate to speed up to 40 meters per second. Let's keep watching as the crate continues to speed up. And there we go. The crate has reached 40 meters per second. But now that we know that the crate reached a speed of 40 meters per second, we can look back at our timer and see how long that took. Well, I timed it out. And I found that it took the crate to go from zero to 40 meters per second, exactly 20 seconds. Let me show you a little bit about now how we can find the acceleration of the crate, knowing that it went from zero to 40 meters per second in 20 seconds. Let's go to the board. So let's write down the information we knew about the crate in our video. Well, the crate started at a speed of zero meters per second. 
And usually we write speed as V. Then the crate got up to a speed of 40 meters per second. Is that V as well? How can I have two different Vs? Well, that's because the crate had a beginning or an initial speed and an ending or a final speed. So let's call the initial speed zero meters per second. And let's call the final speed 40 meters per second. Let's also remember that the time that the crate was moving for was 20 seconds. If I want to find the acceleration of the crate, I'm going to use this information. The fact that the crate took 20 seconds to go from zero to 40 meters per second. But now let's take a look at, a, at an equation that's going to help us figure this out. To calculate acceleration in physics, we use this equation. Vf minus Vi divided by T. What does that mean? Well, that means the final velocity minus the beginning velocity divided by the time will equal your acceleration. So now let's plug in our numbers from step one of our three-step method, and we're going to see if we can find the acceleration. So to find the acceleration, we'll need to take the final velocity, which was the speed at which the crate was moving at the very end of the problem, or 40 meters per second, minus the speed that the crate was moving at the very beginning of the problem, zero meters per second, and divided by the time, how long it took to undergo that change in speed, which was 20 seconds. Notice that if I divide these numbers out and do the math, I get that the acceleration is 2. But 2 what? Remember before, our unit for acceleration is a weird looking one. It's meters per second squared. Or in other words, if you prefer, 2 meters per second per second. That's just as we expected. We found from looking at the overall motion of the crate that yes, it did indeed increase its speed by 2 meters per second for every second that it was in motion. And that's why we say that this crate has an acceleration of positive two meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. Now let's take a look at another example. We see a man moving across the floor here on a skateboard. The man is moving at a speed of 34 meters per second. That is his initial speed, the speed he's at, at the beginning of the problem. Now I'm going to apply a force and get the man to slow down a little bit. So he's going to accelerate, meaning that his velocity is going to change. Remember, slowing down is still considered acceleration. So let's do that. And while I get the man to slow down, I'm also going to time how long it takes him to slow down. Notice now the man is moving slower. He's now only moving at a speed of 30 meters per second. So his speed has changed. In fact, it has decreased. So now let's take a look down at the time. I found that this took exactly 2.5 seconds to happen. So to summarize, the man was originally moving at an initial speed of 34 meters per second. He slowed down to a new final speed of 30 meters per second and that process took two and a half seconds.
Let's go to the board and use that information to see if we can calculate the man's acceleration. Welcome to the board. Now let's calculate what the acceleration in the man uh, of the man in the example we just saw actually is. Well, if you remember, his initial velocity, the speed he was moving at before he began slowing down, was 34 meters per second. Then the man slowed down to a new final velocity, a slower speed of only 30 meters per second. Lastly, from my timer, I knew that that process took a time of 2.5 seconds. Now I asked you to find something. I asked you to find the acceleration. So we're going to do a real proper job here on our three-step method. And we're going to say that we are looking for the acceleration or that it equals question mark. And do you remember what unit we use for acceleration? If you said meters per second squared, you'd be right. So I'm going to put that over here so I remember that that is the correct unit to use when I finish my three-step method. So this is step one, where I've collected all of the information that I know. Now, I'm going to come over and use an equation. And maybe you remember the equation we just discussed. To find acceleration, you have to take the final velocity, subtract the initial velocity, and then divide by the time. In other words, find how much the velocity changed by in a certain amount of time. Now let's plug in our numbers and see what we get. To find the acceleration, we have to take the final velocity, 30 meters per second, and subtract the beginning velocity, 34 meters per second. That's how much the velocity has changed by. We'll then divide by the time that it took, two and a half seconds. When I do my math out, I get an answer of negative 1.6 meters per second squared. Now you might remember, meters per second squared, that's the same thing as meters per second per second. This means that the man has decreased his speed. That's what the negative means. By 1.6 meters per second, every second. So this man was moving at a certain speed and every second that goes by, he slows down by 1.6 meters per second every second. That makes sense if you think about the animation you just watched because the man was slowing down. So his speed was decreasing and it went from 34, from 34 down to 30 in two and a half seconds, meaning this is his acceleration, or in other words, how quickly he changed his speed. Now, let's take a look at one last kind of silly example. Let's say you and your friend are driving along the street and you're traveling at a speed or an initial velocity of 15 meters per second. Now let's say you just keep driving at that speed in the same direction for the next 10 seconds. So that means after 10 seconds pass, you're still going at 15 meters per second. That's your final velocity. Well, we said that took 10 seconds. And let's say I asked you for your acceleration, which we remember is measured in meters per second squared. Well, let's come over here and calculate the acceleration by using VF minus VI divided by T. You might notice that something strange is happening here. And that's because your VF and your VI were the same value because your speed didn't change. Well, now when we plug our numbers in, we would get an acceleration that's equal to 15 minus 15 divided by 10. 
Try doing that math out on your calculator. You'll get zero. So that means that the acceleration is actually zero meters per second squared. Or in other words, you will change your speed by zero meters per second every second. That's kind of silly. Why do we bother calculating that out? Well, I did this to show you that if you move at constant speed and you don't change how fast you're moving, you will not have an acceleration. You will not be accelerating because even though you're moving, your speed did not change. Not changing your speed means that you are not accelerating. I hope you learned something today about calculating acceleration. Remember, acceleration depends upon a couple of factors. It depends upon how quickly you change your speed. So if you change your speed by a big amount and you do that in a very short time, you will have a big acceleration, sort of like an airplane taking off. It changes its speed by a whole lot in a very fast time. Things that have a big acceleration, whether they're speeding up or slowing down, undergo big changes in speed in very short times. And now, with the help of our equation, we can calculate exactly what their accelerations are. Thanks for watching.